Hello, welcome to Ghost Prime Transformers Reviews. Sorry about some of the background noise, my daughter is my helper today. Uh, today in this video we'll be taking a look at Kingdom Commander Class Rodimus Prime. Now, he's a little small for a Commander Class figure, at least by himself. Most of the bulk of this guy is in his trailer and it's pretty big. It's much larger than the, uh, the, the Power of the Primes uh, Rodimus Prime that we got recently. And this guy is actually a lot better than that one. There are some complaints about some of the sculpt work, uh, but I actually don't mind that too much. The, the vehicle though, th that that I think needs some improvement. However, he's great posability. He's a really cool figure. I actually really enjoy it with no faux parts. So without any further ado, let's get to the review. All right, and of course, let's take a look at this packaging first, this packaging. <laughs> It is quite nice, quite nice indeed. You can see the Rodimus Prime here, sword in hand, running to battle, and the, him as the Space Winnebago there, and it wraps around the side, as all Kingdom packaging has done. You see the arc in the background up there on top of the volcano, which is so, but that's been like that way on Kingdom packaging. On the back, we have the robot mode, the race, car-ish mode, his accessories, uh, the gun placement mode, and the Space Winnebago mode. There is a couple differences on this one, uh, the, the accessories that actually they have. So these two pieces right here and here are actually molded and cast in a dark black. So it, when you actually connect them to the stacks like that, it looks like he's throwing out some giant bits, on giant puffs of smog. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly the right choice. I think it would have looked a lot better being flames or being orange or something like that. I think that would have worked really well with the, the whole aesthetic. I don't know why they chose that color. It didn't make sense to me. He actually comes with a couple more accessories and shows on here. He comes with uh, the blast effects. I think the blast effects are the same ones we got with the Mega Supreme, except for they're molded in blue, which I will go over that. On the top, it's just the Autobot logo with the, with the War for Cybertron logo. The side, we got the Kingdom uh, basic poster side. Not much on the bottom. And inside the box, you do get the instruction booklet and, of course, a card. In this case, it's Optimus Prime. Another one. And he is... Oh, it's the dead Optimus Prime. Which, I already have this card. And you get the instruction poster which shows you everything you could do with the accessories, all the accessories it comes with, how to use the trailer. I'm gonna open it up. This thing gets huge. Huge set of instructions. It is a very clear set of instruction. Tells you where you could place everything in the trailer. This is a very cool feature, how you could place the different items in the tray in the bottom. Very cool. Uh, transformation. Goes all the way around the back, even for the trailer. How you can use the blast effects, the matrix, and all this stuff. He does come with quite a bit of stuff, which is very cool. Um, for an $8 figure, I would hope he would. All right, moving on to the car mode first. He, does, he is packaged this way, and then the trailer is packaged open in the box. So this is why I'm, I'm starting off with the car mode and just this part of the car mode first, is because this is the way he's packaged. So there's been a lot of uh, talk about this car mode and how it looks. It is definitely not sleek. It has that giant fin, which is indicative of the character. It just it's just bulky. Actually, I don't I don't really mind it in person. I do wish that these were the the, the hubs were painted, the rims, as feet kind of are very blatantly sticking out of the back. It's not a sleek mode. It's it, but it, you know it's it actually it rolls fairly well. Uh, the canopy does not. The cockpit does not open. It, it kind of is what it is. All right, now let's move on to the trailer. So to put him in the trailer mode, you just kind of go in and he snaps in just like that. And there you have him in his 
space Winnebago mode. I don't know if they really wanted to go that route anymore because he is very lengthy. Uh, he's extremely long. Not only is he long, but he looks elongated. Like this just looks like they took it and just stretched the image. You know what I mean? Like if he took something in Photoshop that was like this and it's like that. That's what this looks like. This sticks out way too far. It would be way better stuck in there more. It doesn't look right. Again, the hubcaps would be great. This paintwork is nice, but it's it's okay. Uh, it rolls good, rolls well. Uh, you can see that he has his other wheel here, which usually, a much, you know, in a common configuration, this is not showing up as two separate wheels here. These are back and hidden. So it has these, just these uh, six wheels as the driving wheels on it but they really made this longer. And I'm not sure if that's because of they wanted to make it feel like it's more worth the cost, but that's something. And also on mine, it's very hard to get this to stay shut. I have gotten it, but it's very difficult to get that to stay shut. Now he does have five millimeter ports that appear in multiple areas on him. So you can post his weapons there, post other weapons there. He has, some storage up here, which is where I have his last effects. You just open this whole piece, really. And so here's part of it. These are the same ones that came with, I think it was first came with Omega Supreme. But you put them together like, I believe, like, hey, I got this wrong. This. So kind of like that. And you get two of these little end pieces here. And he has more accessory storage right here in this under compartment. You just take it, pull that all the way out. Oh, I did forget this one, I guess. And you could put more of his blast effects, his sword in there. Again, we know how these connect. Here is his sword. His sword does have a little post, so you can place it in various places and you can place it on the figure's back. This, this is sort of strange for Hasbro. This is actually done in a hard plastic. It is not this soft rubbery plastic. This is a hard plastic piece which I thought was interesting. They usually don't do hard plastic clear pieces like this. It's like the same material as the window's made of. He also has a gun, which I have actually, his gun and his smog pieces, which I've placed inside the trailer. So you can move this up. This is pretty cool. Again, sorry for the noise, my daughter's in the background and playing with her iPad. So these little metal pieces here, which are metal shocks, very cool little detail. And you could, he has a, one of the combat portal they're called here, so you can connect them to other the other bases. And in here, I have his gun. Now his gun un could fold up, you can put it on the car, on the side of the car, or you could have it like this. You could post it really anywhere. Here, here, top, anywhere you want. Choice is up to you. Oh, let's just open this up, shall we? So let's take him out. And then go ahead and open these doors. <laughs> that down. Here, actually, this goes like this. Not around. One of this is technically an accessory. It comes folded up like this in the box. Is the gun emplacement. Lift it up. Open these. He has handles right here for his gun. This here, little piece right here, allows you to port it into one of the ports in the trailer. Here are the other two accessories. These are the aforementioned smog coming out of the pipes. Now these could go on the car itself here. There we go. Like that. So he could be a gross polluter. Kind of looks like tar coming out because it's so shiny. But this does go in here. Of course, it closes all up. 
like this. Come back. And we're ready for some comparisons with other vehicles. First up, let's compare it with the Power of the Primes Rodimus. Now this is much more a classic looking Rodimus. It has much more of that classic shape. The fire kind of looks like it's coming out of the the, the uh, exhaust there, which is kind of cool. There's a lot of similarities in shape. Let's see if I can get them back here, especially with the back end of the feet here. The Generation 1 kind of goes down like this. This comes out kind of like the same shape as that. But that's how they compare. This is, as you can see, much, much larger. Now, when you compare these in robot mode, this thing definitely is huge. So they're a very different beast. Here he is with his Generation 1 counterpart. Uh, as you can see, either way, it has a lot of similarity in detail. The swooping, the swooping flames on the side. These come up in a sort of a, almost a, like a backwards S fashion. It would be nice if these were chrome. But they look from the front. That's how they look from the side. This just looks like it's coming out like this. This is a much sleeker look. I mean, you can look from the top, how it's got that curve to it. This is definitely flat. There he is next to his previous form, the Studio Series 86 version of him, uh, version of Hot Rod. Massive difference. And here he is with Kingdom Optimus Prime. Very close to the same length. They are very, very close to the same length. So, Commander Class, Leader Class. Moving on, let's go into transformation. First, let's remove him from his trailer. Let's put that off to the side for now. And you have the car. Now, first, what you want to do is get everything and make sure everything's in focus. There's these two little flaps on the side that actually peg in right here. You can see there's the, the port ports on the side here. So you take this one, move that around, align it with that port. It just lines right up and snaps right in. The other side, same way, and put that together. Mine actually doesn't quite line up and snap in like that one does, but it doesn't really affect anything. So then you could take this whole top piece, move that up, exposing the back legs, and just a ton of detail. So now what you want to do is take the arms and kind of disconnect them here. I guess on either side. I uh, think so then you get that in focus. Take these. I get to unpeg them and move them all the way out, all the way out like this. They so have something like that. Take these pieces here. Fold these under. Very slim, similar to. Uh, Hot Rod. Actually, this does share some similarities with Hot Rod. Um, then what we're going to do is, so this is kind of a unique sort of thing. You take the, these here wheels, you're going to move them out like this. Now I take these pieces here and just unconnect the legs first. Take these. There's a peg here. You unpeg it and move them open. Now that's a lot like Hot Rod and then you extend the leg. Okay, no big deal, right? But this is the weird part. So you take, see this wheel right here? Both of all four of these wheels are strange. You move it, push it down. And then this folds under here and goes right there. You can see it sticking out. And then this piece comes around and snaps into place. Of course, it's not doing it for me on camera, but it snaps in there, it goes, snaps in place. Then you can take the foot Move the foot out like that, and there's one of the legs. Second verse, do the same as the first. Step down. Open, around, in. I kind of got to move this kind of plastic out of the way. I almost feel like I'm going to break it sometimes. Then this moves around, snaps together, and you can open the foot. So we have this right here. Now what we're going to want to do is turn the waist all the way around. So, move the camera up a little bit. So take 
this piece here, move that forward. They just tab in right there and there to right under here. And then this piece comes all the way down. Kind of make that as flat as possible. So you can get, see this little piece right here. This needs to be flat. And this piece is flat because this whole section here, the arms, you just move these up, will turn all the way around, just like that. So that turns all the way around. That brings the arms to the front, to the, how that's supposed to, to be. And then with these, you want to take this piece here. There's a tab, let's see, get in there. There's a tab right there that actually tabs directly into there. So these move down and up, and it snaps in. Do that for both. Down on the way, move this up, push, snap. So we have the arms. So for the chest, what I do first, with the arm out of the way, take this and this will snap when you will friction snap in there. If I can get it, there we go. Because there's a little tab right there, it tabs into there. And it, there we go. Friction snaps in there. So you get one. Like, it's almost like it's one piece. Then this moves up like this. And there is, on the back, there's a little port right there. So this will snap into that. It's actually a pretty tight connection. So you want to move that up and line them up. And then push, snap. And kind of push that all down. So we have something like this. This back piece, turn around, move up, slide it down. And this piece doesn't really snap. It's not on mine. It has this little friction sort of snap, but it's not a snap. It's not very tight, but it does go in there. Now we're almost done. So you take the arms, extend them just a very little bit, either side, take the hand under here, move it down, which the finger needs to be pointed for this all to fit together, by the way. And then take this piece, rotate it all the way around. And then this piece here moves down. Rotate that over, and there's a tab right there that tabs into this, and this this piece tabs into here. It goes like this. We'll tab that in, all the way in. And you do the same thing for the other side. Arm in, other hand in, round. Tab that together, tab that together, put the hands in the position you want them in. And one thing I did forget to show actually with about transformation, just to share that up a little bit. This, this wheel will actually open up, you can see that, it opens up and there's a tab inside there that actually tabs right here. It's a cool little feature that's kind of unnecessary, it kind of cleans up the arm a little bit. I did forget that to show that on either side. That is a very cool feature that I realized that I completely forgot. And there you have robot mode. All right, so getting him up on the turntable, you can see all the detail on him. He actually has a pretty nice presence. He has a lot of paintwork, a lot of sculpted detail on him. They definitely decked him out to the nines. They knew this was going to be an expensive figure. They knew he was going to be short. So they tried to put a lot into him. We got all kinds of detail that show up on the fin here. Just tons of detail throughout. Really, really nice paintwork. These actually, his, his thighs here are completely painted. As is the chest, the, the head, all the silver accents. Very, very nicely done. Let's zoom in just a little bit on it. We we'll get to some close-ups on some of that detail. So as I was saying, the detail is quite amazing. I really do like that head sculpt. The chest is beautifully painted. There's just tons and tons of really nice detail on this guy all the way around. The, the, I mean, it's a shame they didn't paint the rims. Very, very nice figure. Uh, look at that, the detail on the, the orange and the yellow there. And as we come down to the legs. And the hands and the crotch piece there. Very nice detail. Even subtle paintwork on it. They did a really, really very good job on this, on this guy. Okay, now I want to get into articulation real quick. So the head is on a ball joint and the neck is on a joint as well. They can move back and forth. 
all the way around. You can look up. Uh, not really down too much because he gets this collar gets in the way, but you got a little bit of an inquisitive look. Left and right, of course. His shoulders can go all the way around. If it, if you, but you can move this to go all the way around. They go up this far. They could actually go around like this a bit. His, he does have a bicep swivel, and his elbows bend more than ninety degrees. He has a wrist swivel. He also has finger articulation, so he's got knuckle articulation on these three fingers, and he has, let's see, my camera's not blurry, articulation here and articulation there. And he has a single finger with an articulation, two points of articulation here and here. His thumb is not articulated. His wrist can go in and out like that, and all the way around. He has a good articulation here. His waist is articulated. You kind of got to move this piece back a little bit. <laughs> But he, you can get him to go all the way around on the waist, partially due to transformation. His legs could go up that far. He could kick pretty high. Uh, can't move it back super far. It's kind of hits right here at the top. So he can't, doesn't go back super far, but he does go out a fair amount. Uh, that has a little flap there, but that's all it could go. Um, his knees could go pretty far over 90 degrees. Uh, he does have a three, 360 thigh. His ankles are very cool. They do, of course, the, the rocker, but they also could kind of go out a little bit back. So you could actually get some really, really deep uh, movements on that ankle and make him have some awesome, really nice posability. He, he stands exceptionally well also. So for his weapons, he can wield his weapon. If I could get that in focus. He can wield a weapon. It is blast effect compatible. He can also, one thing, I guess this goes into articulation, but another thing he can do, he does have the matrix of leadership, which the other piece will clip onto, which we know how it's kind of the same way as Hot Rod. He comes with a sword, because I remember him in generation one with a sword, don't you? But swords are cool either way. You can hold on to his sword. Or he could hold on to it in his back. He could kind of place it in the back there. So overall, he's, he's pretty wet. He's pretty armed up. Pretty cool. Now getting into the battle station, as I showed earlier. You can open up these pieces here to expose, open up the side pieces to expose the innards. This piece, open that, this piece comes down like that. Fold this piece up. The blast doors come out. These come up. Let's fold that all the way down. So we have something like this. Now inside here, there is a ton of ports. Ton of five millimeter ports. You could put all kinds of weapons, all kinds of things in this. You could do a lot with this, and it's part of a base collectible uh, connector. So this is pretty cool. And to put him on his gun emplacement, of course, you got to remove his weapons. And take his hands, put him up here. Slide one of the hands on the handles, and then another. Kind of make it look as cool as possible. I think that he looks really cool this way. I've always liked him with the giant gun like this too. Like that. One thing that's also cool is you could actually move the gun. He just he won't drop it either. That's really cool. I think this is something that's just, just pretty awesome. And it is, of course, blast effect compatible. Now, another thing that you could do with this gun is you could fold it back up. I'm going to move this all the way around. I'll put these like this. I guess you leave it like that. Take this piece. That folds out. So this could be... I guess it's, uh, you know, it could kind of stand up on its own here. Uh, take this back. This is a flat piece to get focus. Flat piece here and a peg, which... 
is lines up with his back piece here. Let me move that around and you could peg that into his back and he could have that like that, which honestly does not hold well. But that is something you can do. Not a way I'll be displaying him, but it's an option. So let's get into comparisons. All right, so first up, for a comparison, here he is next to Hot Rod. He is sizably bigger. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. He definitely looks like an upgraded form. They have a lot of, the, of similar details and lines. Um, definitely looks like an upgraded form. I wish this was panel line like that. That looks, that just really sets it off nicely. I, I really like that. There he is next to leader class Optimus Prime. Here he is next to Generation 1 of Rodimus Prime. They're quite the same height. All right, let's see if I can fit this. Here he is, just barely. There he is with the Titans Return Rodimus Prime. Now, let's see if I can get it. I think his head sculpt here is quite quite close. The color on this guy's a little bit better, but he's got that silver. Actually, I think the silver makes him look older. The silver looks makes him look much, much older. He's got a similar old looking head sculpt to this guy, but he is much larger. So does he fit in the commander class? You tell me. So overall, He's a really good figure. I love his posability. I like the sculpt work. I can even get by the kind of a barrel chest he's got. I don't mind that at all. It gives a little, little bulk. I like that. I don't mind the old face. I think it looks really good. It kind of reminds me of that, the old original line art from the, the pre-production of the movie. I think he looks really good. The trailer not closing all the way is kind of an issue, but I do like how it has a bunch of storage for all the parts. You get every part in that trailer, which is really cool. It's got some nice little features to it. The trailer, the trailered up mode looks weird and it looks weird as just a car mode. I can kind of get by it. I understand what they're doing. It just, it's not sleek. It's just not sleek. There's no sleekness to it at all, even for a space Winnebago. But I would still say pick him up. Uh, the bulk of the price is in that trailer. He has that wonderful gun that he holds really nicely and just looks very imposing. He has a really good presence. And I think that's really what they were going for with this figure. So yeah, I totally highly recommend him, and I think that you should get him. He would look great on your shelf. So please, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that thumbs down vote button if you have to. Subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.